Well, hello. My name is Doug Hoyle. I'm the director of the North Carolina Division of Emergency Management. And North Carolina is a wonderful state in which to live, to work, to play. We, uh, we have a, a great variety of, uh, of landscape from coastal to mountain regions. And, uh, but it's also a state that has the potential for disaster. And I think that you need to know that, uh, that we're, we're subject to natural disasters. Uh, we're also subject to hazardous material spills. We're subject to, uh, to other potential disasters. Uh, we have four nuclear power plants that are located in the state of North Carolina that we plan for and practice for you know, emergencies that might occur there or hazardous material spills or, or natural disasters as well. So, so we're always trying to be ready. April 16th, North Carolina was affected by a series of 25 tornadoes that touched down and did significant damage to our state. Some of the results, we had 24 residents killed in that disaster event. We also had 19 counties sustain significant damage. Hundreds of people were sent to hospitals with injuries that they sustained in the disaster and millions of dollars in disaster damage. Our objective in this presentation is to talk to you about the long-term recovery, how we work through that process, the responsibilities at a state government level, the federal government level, and at the local government level, so that we all have a role in this recovery process, and we would like for you to understand that. We're constantly engaged in preparedness for emergency and disaster. The day before the tornadoes, we were notified by the National Weather Service that there was potential for severe weather on Saturday, April the 16th. We notified our local governments about the potential for severe weather. We checked our plans. We ensured that we had adequate personnel on duty to address any issues or problems that might come up with the potential for severe weather and prepared ourselves to address any problems that we might encounter. We all have a role in disaster response. I mean, when you come right down to it, and in disaster recovery, and the roles start at the local government level because the local government is at the front end of the disaster. So they are going to respond with their local resources, address the immediate needs of people, and as they have needs beyond their capability, they ask the state, and the state's role is to support the local response, and the federal role is to support the state and local response. Initially, we just keep an eye on the weather and see how it does, and once in the tornado season, once a tornado hits, and then we uh, have everybody before the tornado hits, we get everybody geared up and everybody ready in case of severe weather. When we first got here, our main concern was trying to get into the affected area and that was very hard. Uh, we had power poles, power lines, trees, buildings in roadways. We had a lot of roads that were blocked and we could not get through and we had to cut our way through. So uh, that was a big challenge we had. We had folks who were calling us wanting to know if we could open a shelter and we chose not to open a shelter uh, at that time because tornadoes are so unpredictable. And it ended up being one of the buildings that was demolished or needed severe repair was one of the schools we would have used for a shelter. The decision to not open the shelter before the, the storm hit was not that difficult a decision to make um, because the unpredictability of of tornadoes and these type of storms. During the tornadoes, we called FEMA the day of the tornadoes during the event while it was unfolding. Our FEMA response started the following day on that Sunday morning. Uh, our federal coordinating officer, Mike Bolch, arrived and, uh, and then his team followed as, uh, as we got more support from the federal government. The states and the locals are always in charge of disasters. They're the first ones on the scene. They know all the details. Uh, they, can, they can get there faster than we can, but we're there to provide whatever level of support that, that they don't have. We work within the Stafford Act. The Stafford Act was created so the federal government could have some legal authority to spend money 
and to use federal assets such as the Army or the Army Corps of Engineers or the Health and Human Services or other federal agencies to support the state and locals. Our role when it comes to disaster recovery, work with local governments, uh, and try to educate both the local government officials and our residents about the process, about the things that we can do. Our job is to go in and work with the counties to make sure they have the needed resources and that, that they need for response. The other thing is to try to set the tone for local government to prepare for the next stage, which is going to be recovery, which a lot of times overlaps with response. On April 16th, you don't know if you're prepared or not. You're just trying to get out and help everyone you can because there's so many things you never thought of, like medicine, um, seniors trapped in their home, um, people hurt, uh, housing, um, jobs, because we had businesses destroyed. So there were so many elements that I have never considered. I can honestly say, after I saw the disaster and wondering and look at how the federal, state, and locals work so well together, that I was tremendously satisfied with what I saw. Because of course, you know Berkeley County had the largest, uh, the largest deaths in that particular community, and most of it was was family connected in some way. Oh my God, that's me and my husband. They are still uh, mourning the mothers, the wives, and whomever they lost. It's been hard because in, in the other, tr other uh, uh, disasters that we've had, we have, we have had no loss of life. And it's, it's affected our community greatly because you know, that's something that we're not used to dealing with. There's his friends and family, and there, there's a lot of, I guess that's made this, this effort, this, this tornado uh, disaster, I guess worse in the eyes of most people than, than the other disasters that we've had because we had that loss of life. Our community doesn't embrace help as quickly as you think they might would ordinarily. People have a tendency to go to family and friends instead of, for instance, using the shelter. The shelter was there, but people were not staying there. State and federal programs are really designed to address the basic needs of our disaster survivors and to try our very best to help them get back on their feet. It's not going to fix everything. There will be problems and there will be things that we have to address. FEMA is there to provide any assistance that that fits within the legalities of the Stafford Act. And so if they have some need that they haven't been able to fulfill themselves or through the state, we can discuss it. And, and there may be some other mechanism to cover it or there may be something else we can do. In North Carolina, we work with every component of the recovery process. We work with the individuals, we also work with the volunteer agencies because we realize that without the volunteers we still would not be able to recover. So we continue to work with the volunteer agencies and the local governments and the individuals. It takes a whole of community to ensure that individuals are able to recover. The state governments, the federal government can do so much but there are certain things that we just aren't equipped to do or can't do for one reason or another. And we rely on the non-governmental agencies such as faith-based groups, civic groups, uh, other private industry groups to come in and fill in those gaps and to work together to, uh, to bring all of a community together, as we call it, the whole of community. Everybody from the Red Cross to the Salvation Army, Baptist Men's Association, uh, Samaritan's Purse, there's, there's just a whole wealth of things like that in this country that can help out in a disaster situation. Volunteers are extremely important. Uh, without the volunteers, you're not going to get very much work done, so very much important. We've had over uh, 2,000 volunteers with North Carolina Baptist Men come to this site and uh, primarily do chainsaw work out in the field. Uh, that would include taking trees off the house, out of the yard, and uh, removing those trees and get them to the curbside. In addition to all those chainsaw jobs, we have installed approximately 75 tarps on uh, different roofs all over the city and the county. When we first opened up here, uh, volunteers came in and uh, ran our kitchen. Uh, we have three kitchens. Uh, this particular kitchen uh, did about 45,000 meals in less than uh, two weeks time period. National uh, American Red Cross came in and uh, worked side by side with us. 
uh, and getting those meals out to the field. Planning is the key to any um, effective response or effective recovery program. And I think we sometimes don't think about our plans until we have a large event. And that definitely is not the time to be looking at a plan. When you go through a situation that we went through in April, it does bring a community together. And so we were able to come together. And I think through this whole process in the state of North Carolina, we'll all work on solutions to make it better. Success in any disaster response requires a teamwork effort from all sectors of our community. It's not just a government response, but it's citizens' response, it's volunteer organization response, it's all of us working together as a team. We practice, we plan, we prepare for disasters, and we do that as a team so that when real events occur in the state of North Carolina, we're able to come together, all sectors, working as a team, trying to deliver the service that needs to be delivered or trying to help our citizens recover from this disaster.